Hello, my name is Sophie von Lahr, and I'm the inventor of a robotic arm that works with the eye signals and a nanocarbon electrode that can potentially cure Alzheimer's. I also have a PhD in organizational leadership and currently working as a leadership and executive coach for the Fortune 500 companies. Today, we are going to talk about some really interesting subjects about self-identity, and what it means to discover who you really, really are, and how to present yourself, and many, many more interesting things. So stay tuned. Welcome back to part two of our delicious conversation with Sophie Van Leer. Now, she has a background in systems engineering, neuroscience, and organizational leadership. She has a multidisciplinary approach. I talked about in part one about how she invented a robotic arm at 21 years old. She has uh, created a nano uh, carbon brain electrode to help cure Alzheimer's. She's got three engineering degrees, a PhD, and a whole bunch of other things, as well as working with some of the biggest companies in the world. So we're welcoming back the fabulous Sophie Van Leer. And we were talking about in part one, we're talking about really looking at leadership development from a very different point of view. And we talked about integrating the different parts of ourselves, which is so often um, what we don't do. We talked about how people want to become niched and we need, need to understand how it's important to expand and understand all the different parts of ourselves. But um, in the context of leadership identity and, and how we as leaders identify ourselves, um, you do a lot of work around how we can alter and develop through systems thinking. And I really want to look at that from a point of view, you know, how you got to that by how, you know, maybe you felt boxed in or you boxed yourself in and how you managed to unbox yourself so that you could embrace a bigger identity of yourself. Of course. Um, thanks again for having me back. Um, yes, stop. absolutely. So, when I talk about the system, I'm generally talking about an open system, um, a system that is constantly in flux and constantly in relationship with other things outside of it. So there's a lot of ways to look at who you are, what you are as a result of this, this thing that is ever evolving. Mm -hmm. So if you look at it that way, it's very important for you to develop a very clear understanding of where you are in as it relates to your environment mm -hmm. and how these inputs and outputs to the system of who you are is shaping. So for instance, if you're a leader that, you know, you have this very, you know, defined set of group of people that you relate to in your organization, right? And as a result of these relationships, you've defined who you are and your importance and your Yep. political and social capital it's it's very important to question that yes through opening your system to inquiry based talks with other people maybe having random conversations with people outside of your usual clique right. and seeing what they think of you and gathering feedback and therefore keeping the system of who you are and your identity very open mm -hmm. to not just annual feedback but constant feedback and of course, you know, develop your receivers, become a better listener. The, the challenge with that, though, is that as humans, we love to define stuff. We love to define ourselves. And so people, you know, they, we know this, you know, they, they, they take uh, all kinds of personality tests. You know, people who think personality tests are frivolous still do them. I, I did some research and that was fascinating. <laughs> The people who think that that is a bunch of go go just nonsense and they still do it. They do horoscope tests. They do all kinds of silly things because we're looking to categorize ourselves and, and, and which is actually we're pursuing not being in an open loop. We're uh, in an open system. We're mm -hmm. looking at how we can box ourselves. So talk to us about how you did that. Did you, did it, because it's natural to box yourself and so how did you find yourself in that and how did you realize that you needed to get out of it um yeah i really uh, appreciate that questions and the, the answer is not pc and you told me it's okay to be whoever whatever i want to be so absolutely. i'm gonna take, take you up on that though absolutely um 
one of the pet peeves that I have when I talk to colleagues and coaches, especially when I was on a retreat that we were all, you know, talking about what coaching means to each one of us, was that a lot of people see coaching as this more of a distant sitting here and telling you how great you are. Um, but whereas I'm more of a hands-on getting there and I'm not afraid of the dark. Let's just put it that way. Right. I am very okay. We talk to you about how we can develop your political influence, how we, you can develop your social in, influence within the realm of ethics and morality. Of course. Yeah. And, and, and this is, you know, it's esoteric talk has its own, you know, time and place. But I think coaching is a very intimate relationship of allowing someone to become who they are and what they want to become as a result of understanding everything and empowering them um, in ways that other coaches are too timid to go there. So, but with yourself, how did you, was it that encounter with all those other coaches yes. who were talking yes. that made you realize that you're not that kind of coach? I, yes, it was, it was a lot of holding a place discussions, as they put it, and a lot of co-creation, the words that they use and things that is very, it's become its own language and cult, uh, I think. Yeah, I and, and unfortunately, I am too much of a rebel to fit in anything and anywhere. So that was, that was my disorienting dilemma. <laughs> Right. Back to the conversation. So it, it's interesting to me because, um, you know, you and I had that, dis that discussion in Curiosity Bites. And I, again, I encourage anybody who's tuning in to, to go over to Curiosity Bites and you'll hear the, a greater depth of, of the history of who Sophie is and how she came to be where she is and, and all the different facets of, of a background that have brought about this uh, wonderful human being. But the key that I'm uh, want to confront here is we are all compelled to fit in that is human nature we want to belong to something we compelled to fit in and I will often speak about how there's a great deal of difference between fitting in and belonging we we try to fit in in a in as a substitute for belonging and that's a very different thing in order to belong you have to be willing to stand alone first to fit in, no, you just shove yourself into something and you'll fit in, which means you carve off the edges of yourself and you, you know, batten down your wings and you do the things to, to make sure you're in this, you're at this retreat with all these other coaches, executive coaches, they're all the big hoo-hahs of the coaching world using all the, the right language and the right jargon and all the usual cultish bullshit um, that they tend to use. And talk to us about that moment of realizing, oh my God, I don't fit in. Yet I hold the label, I hold the shingle, which is coach, but I'm not one of them. Talk to us about that moment for you. Um, I don't want to lie to you, it felt lonely for a second. Yeah. And I have developed the muscle of turning lonely into the definition of so so what mm -hmm. so i'm lonely so what it's it's one of those things that it's almost like an internal joke right we are here again and it's great i'm right. i love to be here it's almost like become a different label for me so I, in the process of meaning making i kind of enjoy it right and it's one of those things that I've developed through a lot of internal conversations and redefining my negative self-talk mm -hmm. um, into new allies that sometimes lurk in the background. And I, Dov, can I tell you a funny story? Please. Yeah. So I'm dyslexic. So I grew up not being able to read very well. I understand oh. that very well. I have the same <laughs> Uh, so, as you know, the demons of dyslexia are very potent. Mm -hmm. um, and despite my, despite my rather objectively high IQ, I always thought I'm very stupid. And that was the demon that 
you know, my inner negative self-talk that kept telling me that. So mm -hmm. after a while of doing, you know, getting a certificate in cognitive behavioral therapy and a lot of soul searching, I realized that I'm going to name the, the little creepy thing in the corner. So it's now called angular. Angular. Yeah. It's like the fish angular fish. Oh, okay. That has the very ugly teeth. Oh, I thought you meant like Angela Merkel. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> oh, no, no. It's just no. Ang okay. like the fish. And, right. and labeling exercise has become so powerful. Like, so that's one of the things I do with my, um, you know, clients, with the leaders that I coach, mm -hmm. of identifying their negative self-talk, their imposter syndrome, and labeling it. Mm -hmm. So sometimes when I have Angular comes up and tell me I'm stupid, I'm like, Angular, not today, buddy. I'm, I'm too boozy to deal with you. <laughs> right. So that sense of detachment has yeah. helped me really find empowerment, a space to be me. So mm -hmm. in a retreat that I was, when Angular came up, I was like, hey, look, you're not fitting in once again. I was like, hey, I hear you, Angular, but so what? Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's interesting because, uh, you know, you talked about that moment of loneliness and it's interesting in the work that i do with my clients i will often say that is the moment of uh, you you're looking at it as the moment of not fitting in and therefore lonely but what i make it is it's the moment of standing out and showing that you're not one of the crowd so the question is i uh, do you fit in which makes you one one of one of a million or are you one in a million which makes you stand out which means you have something to offer that is not going to fit in the box. You can't put a shark in a can, in a tuna can. <laughs> it doesn't work. So you're too big for this. Uh, and that willingness to accept that I'm too big for the label is a very confrontive piece for a lot of leaders, particularly when they have invested five years, 10 years, 20 years, a lifetime in that identity, uh, certainly a career lifetime in that identity. And, and the idea that they might have more to offer is good for you and I to say, but very difficult for them to step into. Because yes. there's that gap, you know, that which you and I might see as a six inch gap across across the, uh, the, 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 um, the gorge, but for them might feel like a 100 feet. All right. So it just feels like they will fall in to that, you know, emptiness forever. And it's not true. So I get that you and I can reframe it, but what would be the way that they might reframe it? I think step one is to, for reframe, you have to have a new frame, right? So a step one is to create a new you. Um, so I think step one is never to get rid of, you know, the old habits. A step one is to create new habits mm -hmm. and new habits usually get rid of old habits. That's how the brain and synapses work. Right. right? So it's very important to come up with who is the new you that is going to shine a light on all the darkness within you and it's going to allow you to be so i think the new you should have a very strong definition so for instance label who you are as who you want to become so kind of have a strategic people talk about the strategic planning as far as organizational management and stuff but you have to have a strategic planning for who you want to become mm. right yes. so label your future self and once that becomes like a reality and you keep on telling yourself that, you know, my new label, for instance, in that moment was this, you know, pesky little kid that never, ever feels lonely despite of whatever the environment tells her. I will be this outspoken and sometimes annoying character that is always going to stick to my guns and be real. And this this identity that I give to myself that has a lot of color and meaning for me, it's very accessible to my mind. Yes. Because I've put a lot of time and emotions and energy into creating that. 
Right. So it's a very good exercise to define who you want to become strategically. And therefore, who you don't want to become is going to go away on its own. So that's great. Now let's take it to the next level. And the next level of that is, okay, let's say I've done that. I've, I've done a strategic sort of planning out who I am. Okay. And I'm going to own that and claim it or whatever it is. But now the lines have gotten blurred. And now I'm meeting Charlie, who is the CEO of whatever it is. And I'm a CEO or I'm a C-suite person or I'm a whatever it is that I was in that box. Now I've sort of tore down those walls and Charlie says to me, so what do you do? Mm -hmm. Right. Um, you know, in your case, it was coach and it's, you know, and uh, you know, as you, if you're tuning in right now, you know, we don't have coaches on this show. Um, they're not a fit for us. Um, we turn them probably about eight or nine of them away every single week. Um, we want to be on the show. But you're not a traditional coach or else you wouldn't, we wouldn't be having this conversation. But at the same time, that label gets applied to you. So how do they confront that part? And you can use yourself as the example uh, of, okay, I've just been around this, you know, this 20 or 50 or whatever it is number of coaches. And I realize I don't fit in with those clowns. So now that somebody says to me, what do I do? What well, it's kind of, I kind of still have to say coach mm -hmm. or do you, or do you just say someone else? I absolutely proudly say that I'm a leadership executive coach and it is because I've been lucky to actually meet a couple of people. And I mean couple because I actively um, talk and collaborate with other coaches, but those couple of people that I look up to have allowed me to be proud of the title um, so I absolutely am okay with the title of being an executive coach. And I think it's the idea of leading the leaders and being their partner in the leadership journey is such an, a meaningful calling for me that once again, it's one of those things that Khalil Gibran talks about, you know, I told God to, you know, I, you know, I want to kill my worst enemy and said that you should kill yourself. It's, we are our own worst enemies. Of course. So therefore, I think once you come to peace with any title, with whatever you are and whatever you want to become, then communicating to kind of communicating it to other people is, is not hard. But for the person listening or viewing us, they're going, yeah, that's easy for you to say. <laughs> so, you know, because uh, we're asking people to confront their identity. We're asking people to confront the identity that they've invested heavily in and say, there's a greater sense of you. There's a bigger part of you that's outside of that box. And let's get you out of the box. But they're still saying, yeah, but I don't know how to identify myself outside the box. The, the challenge is, that I'm now not identified as, but I don't know what to identify myself as. And again, we, you know, it's where we started out even in part one of the show where I talked about um, people love to take these tests and they, you know, they, 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 so they can identify, oh, I'm a blue or I'm a beige or, or I'm, I'm a, I'm a C3PO or I'm a, you know, <laughs> all the codes or I'm a Taurus or whatever it is. And, and they still think it's bunk, but they still the desire to do it. And it's a part of translating that to another person. So it's see me, recognize me as, so that you can see value in me. And that still is necessary in the world we live in. And you even do it yourself because you say, I'm an executive leadership coach. Okay but you're not a traditional executive leadership coach. So immediately that label is put forward. There is a, uh, a bunch of assumptions that come with that for the other person. So what I'm trying to get to with our listener listening is going, okay, maybe I need to unbox myself and challenge myself. And when I show up and I say, I'm an XXX, like you, you know, uh, executive leadership coach, it's that point of differentiation. It's that point of separation from 
the crowd where they get lost. How do you help them with that part? Um, value proposition. I think any brand, any personal brand, for it to be meaningful, it has to show through the actual value. Um, words are cheap. Everybody can be somebody. But I think patterns are not. Value is not. It's one of those things that what you hope, what you serve, what you do becomes the identity of you. So I think it's, it's, I don't care if you judge me and prejudge me by a title. I will show you what I can do if you give me the opportunity. It's, it's my former clients that every, everything I've done for them and they have given thanks verbally or none because of the things that have changed and transformed their lives. That piece of meaning has been attached to mine and my identities as a result stronger. Mm -hmm. So therefore, um, in, the incentive for me is to drive meaning and create meaning yes. internally and externally through creating value for others. So really, it doesn't matter. I can, I can call myself, I don't know, a butcher and I still mm -hmm. do coaching as long as I'm a good coach <laughs> and, yeah, I, and I bring people value. I, I love it. I don't, I don't care. No, and I understand that, but I'm, what I'm confronting here is is the challenge they have with they're still inside of a system, right. whether the CEO or CFO or C something O, um, and they're, you know, we talked about imposter syndrome at the beginning, mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, that they're able to overcome some level of the imposter syndrome because of that title, that's great. But now they're confronting another level of that because now I have to confront that I hold this label and I might be okay with the label, like you said, about being a coach. But how do I recognize the value I bring is very often the challenge because even though you and I might look at them as like, well, you're bringing a ton of value, dude. If somebody's got imposter syndrome, they are blind to that. Mm -hmm. So I want to just make sure that how listeners our viewers get a sense of how to recognize your own value once you've torn down those walls those parameters that box that you held yourself in yeah i think association um it's very easy for us to drive meaning based on people and things around us so i think just move from where you are and find a different group that give you a different meaning till you're understanding of self becomes kind of restricted to who you are and if you are still in that space of driving meaning because of external influence it's okay just don't hang out with people at work maybe after you know don't go to happy hours if they are not giving you the value you desire go to other conferences where you can actually assess your value based on the market based on put your brand out there it's i think broadening your horizons changes perspectives yeah i think it's really important for people to understand because that's a very important piece is that a lot of your identity is externally validated by the environment you keep placing yourself in so you know it's one of the things when people ask me about where i'm from and where i was born and where i've lived in all these different places and i'll often say because i i, I was not willing to stay restricted by my environment and that's not by the environment physically, but the people I was surrounding myself with. And I had to be around different people and, and, or else I would buy into it because, and by the way, I want to be clear, that's not their fault. I sold them an identity. They sold it back to me. Mm -hmm. And that's what we do. We sell our identity to somebody and they sell it back to us. And we need to be willing to say, I'm not selling that anymore. So like you said, it's important to go to another environment you know, and not, not to lie about it. It's not about fake it till you make it. It's about looking at, oh, hold on a second. There's a different value proposition here about who I am that I need to bring forward that, that would maybe poo-pooed over there because I sold them a different bill of goods. And so I think that that's a really important piece that you're bringing. And I want to, as we get towards the end of this particular second episode here, I want to address this key piece that you bring up 
it's part of it's a foundational piece of my work and i know it's a foundational piece of yours but i really want to hear from you on it which is the search for meaning because there's a lot of stuff on it you know victor frankl's work is brilliant but the search for meaning we it's a becoming again it's another one of those freaking words that gets put out there and nobody really grasps it but it becomes part of the lexicon of what we should say without understanding it so how what's the the way that you would guide somebody to start finding their meaning their subjective personal deep level of meaning versus the meaning they think they should have mm, i did you know i'm a huge fan of uh, dr franco and logotherapy in general so let me briefly address what you mentioned previously. I think the concept of code switching is something we can discuss briefly with our audience here. And that's yeah. the concept of having multiple value proposition and identities. Yeah. So that's an exercise I do with my clients, which is basically they write down who they are. It's, it's not being deceitful. It's, it's just different branding for different circumstances and different yeah. audience. If they want to look up the concept, it's called again code switching. It's like your yeah. identity is staying fragile and um, staying anti-fragile as a as a result of like exposing itself to other environments and different environments. But to the meaning aspect that you've discussed. So oh God, Dr. Frankel's work is so meaningful to me and the logotherapy in general. I think for anybody to start meaning, right? Mm -hmm. I think it's that those defining moments in life, right? And doco therapy is basically suffering can either break you or it can make you. Diamonds are made out of pressure, mm -hmm. right? But also pressure could be inserted on any rock and not everything becomes diamond. But humans are different because you also have a choice. And that's where, you know, life begins. So owning your choice, allowing mm -hmm. it to happen from moment to moment and not allowing the, the too much of a chaos to get into you. So I think the best way to start the journey of meaning making is to set aside some time to be with yourself and be bored <laughs> and have, right? have some conversations with yourself and get to know yourself. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, I, I agree with you. I, I have often said and with every client I work with is you are, you are either defined or refined by your pain. Mm -hmm. a and your pain might be literally physical pain, but it could just as easily be psychological pain um, it, that came from some not event but usually events in your history and you've decided who you are based on that you know you and i being labeled as dyslexic you know we both uh bought the bullshit idea that we were stupid because of it right i bought that you bought that and then that was therefore a definition it defined us until we decided that no i'm going to allow that to refine me and refine the way that i learn versus you know r r rather than me fitting in with learning in the traditional way so i think that's a really great key point for people to grasp here is that you are defined or you're refined by your pain and the meaning you uh, of anything and this is i i think is a key point i want you to just give me some quick feedback on it but i i think that Oftentimes, the meaning of our lives is determined by others. And that's a challenge that we need to take that power back. When somebody says, well, this happened to you, so you're that. You know, or you, you, know, you have a skill with this, so you're that. Or you don't have any talent of that, so you shouldn't be this. That's a huge challenge. And meaning is about ownership. Mm -hmm. what, what are your thoughts on this? Oh, I'm now we've got so i every time i have an important conversation with a fan, fascinating human being like yourself i usually hold on to a piece of crystal like piece of rock in my hand and that's a symbol of my work 
and who I am, my identity in the current of life is like a stone on the bottom of a river that doesn't change. Mm -hmm. So I absolutely agree with you. I think our worth is not a variable of the equation of life. And it's a constant reminder to myself. And I think that's something that people can remind themselves daily as well. Thank you so much for that, Sophie. As we finish up the show, uh, again, I want you to tell people where they can find out more about you, tell them the name of your website and all the rest of it. Um, but before we do that, I always like to ask for you to tell our audience, tell our viewers, our listeners, one thing that you would want them to take away from today's show that's a practicality that they can put into action, preferably right away, but certainly within 24 hours. What would that be? Um have a conversation with yourself label the negative self-talk as anything a character a being a whatever and with that detach it from who you are and as Dove put it reclaim your power and and be less defined by your inner voice voices that are sometimes negative or outside voices so it's very important to take the power of your self-identity into your own hands by just sitting down and allowing yourself to be bored. Be willing to be bored. I love that. Thank you. So Sophie, please tell our listeners of you where they can find out more about you and all your wonderful resources and how they can get in touch with you if they need to. Oh, of course. Um, Sophie Von Lahr, V-O-N-L-A-E-R and on LinkedIn, on nafscoach.com. And anywhere that Dove can be found because I have him added everywhere and enjoy all his wonderful <laughs> lessons. <laughs> Thank you. And as I said, if you want to hear more from Sophie and you really want to dig deep into, you know, the many, many facets of who she is and the work that she's done, uh, I encourage you to go over to Curiosity Bites. There's a fabulous four part uh, series there with Sophie and we really dig into some pretty <laughs> fascinating conversations yes. uh, that even surprised Sophie as she was telling me yes. before we started. So uh, we encourage you to go there. For you to listen, I want to thank you for tuning in, for being with us. We want to thank, of course, Sophie Van Leer for being with us. And again, of course, we will make sure that all of those uh, links are posted with the uh, link to her website and her social media contacts. They will all be in the show notes. And uh, until next time, dear listener, thank you so much. And remember, you can hang out with other conscious leaders. You can chat about this episode or any other past episodes that you've been listening to on Facebook or in our LinkedIn groups. Just look for the Leadership and Loyalty podcast. It doesn't matter how successful you are. If your employees and your customers don't understand what gives your company meaning, as that word again, you're only working in a fraction of your capability. Find out how you can hire me, Dalv Barron, as a speaker or a leadership strategist for yourself or your organization. You can go to DoveBarron.com because unified, actualized meaning is the one single monolithic difference between mediocrity and greatness in all individuals and companies. I want to thank you for sharing the show with everybody you know. Till next time, stay curious, my friend. Stay curious about who you are outside of the box of your own identity. Maybe give yourself a chance to get bored enough to find out. I'm Dov Barron, and I'm here to assist you tapping into your deepest meaning and reach that next level of clarity, focus, purpose, and profit in your business, your life, and your leadership impact. And I am out. Stay curious, my friends. Stay curious.